создавать человека, человек, который может воевать без страха и без боли. И вот то, о чем я сейчас сказал, может быть страшнее ядерной бомбы. In this video I'm going to talk about genetic engineering in humans. And I'm going to do that with the help of free documentaries. My name is Peter Oosten. I'm a biohacker and a cyborg futurist. I give keynotes and webinars about the topic of human enhancement, human augmentation, biohacking and transhumanism. And within these domains, genetic engineering in humans is a really big topic. So I also write articles about all these topics and I make videos, as you can imagine. So if you like this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below. So in this video, I'm going to share what I think are the three best documentaries on the topic of human genetic engineering. And from each of these documentaries, and they are Human Nature, Unnatural Selection and Citizen Bio, I'm going to share three lessons, insights or things I really liked about that documentary. I remember him saying, remember this word, CRISPR. We've never had the ability to change the fundamental chemical nature of who we are, and now we do. The first documentary is Human Nature from 2019. The director is Adam Bolt, and the documentary is about one hour and 35 minutes long. So what are three things I really liked about this documentary? Well, the first one is that they really give a nice, clean and crisp explanation of CRISPR. Uh, CRISPR is a technology, a method to change the DNA in living in, in humans, but also in animals, in plants, in bacteria, these kinds of things. And with the use of illustrations and also conversations with scientists, and journalists, they really give a nice uh, overview of how the method works. And it's also uh, what they also do, and it's related to my second point, is they also give a nice, uh, you get a nice understanding as a viewer about how the discovery of CRISPR came about. And they interview a lot of A players in the field, for example, Jennifer Doudna, and she also won the Nobel Prize in 2020 for the discovery along with Emmanuel Champagnier of CRISPR-Cas9. But they also interviewed, for example, George Church, who's also a renowned, renowned uh, professor and scientist in this field, but also figures like Fyodor Urnov, uh, Antonio Regaldo, he's one of my favorite um, uh, science journalists, and also uh, uh, Feng Zheng is also was among with George Church, one of the first who demonstrated the use of CRISPR-Cas9 in humans. So yeah, they, it's really amazing that they, uh, uh, because all these figures are, um, are very busy, so it's amazing that they found their time and were willing to cooperate with this documentary. And I'm also really interested in this field for myself, I interviewed John van der Oost. He's not in the documentary, but he's a, uh, he's a professor at the Wageningen University in the Netherlands. So he's a fellow Dutchman. And I also had an interview with him in, in Dutch. But one of his papers and experiments with his group was one of the stepping stones for uh, Chapinche and Doudna and Church and Zhang to uh, develop the method of CRISPR-Cas9. So I think that's also one nice example where I think most of the times when we think of these kind of discoveries we think it's like a sole visionary or a one scientist but it's actually based on the work of other scientists um, and in this documentary you have a pretty broad scope of all the really important scientific figures in this field and the third thing I like about the documentary is that the first part is more about how does CRISPR work, how, this, how did the, yeah, the invention or the discovery of CRISPR came about, but the second part is most about ethics. Uh, like you saw in preview with the remark by Vladimir Putin about super, genetically modified super soldiers. And yeah, well, the, the, the documentary really gets into the, um, uh, makes, you, makes me at least thinking about 
Okay, first we use the, this CRISPR, for example, to uh, help people with a genetic disease or with a certain disorder. But where is the divide between uh, helping people and improving them? Um, so when do we want to use CRISPR technology in humans to uh, increase our, our height or maybe increase our intelligence or maybe become more muscular? So these are really pressing questions for the next couple of years, but also the next couple of decades, and I would say also for the future of our species. CRISPR was the starting gun. Let's you edit just about any gene. Alzheimer's, cystic fibrosis, could be diseases of the past. He's missing both copies of the RPE65 gene. He will eventually go completely blind. If you're really playing gun, you don't care what other people think. The second documentary is Unnatural Selection from 2019 and the directors are Joe Egender and Leo Kaufman. And each episode, because there are four episodes in this documentary series, is a little more than one hour. So what do I like about the documentary series Unnatural Selection? Well, first of all, because they have, there are four episodes, because they got more time, they get into all the different applications of genetic modification in humans, but also in plants, in animals, in bacteria, and also what kind of impact it can have on the world. The second thing I really liked about this series is that they also talk a lot with biohackers. So if you saw in the introduction, I already told you that I'm a biohacker myself. Well, in this series, they talk to my, let's say, fellow biohackers like David Ishii, um, Josia Zehner, Aaron Trawick, and also Tristan Roberts. And Tristan Roberts, I had an interview with him. He's one of the main figures in unnatural selection because Tristan um, does genetic modification on himself as a sort of experiment. And, um, and the reason is that he um, currently has to take like daily medicine against HIV. And he wants to do genetic modification so his body will produce its own antibodies against the virus. So you follow through all the episodes, you follow Tristan, um, yeah, how it's experiment is going and what are the reasons that he uh, yeah is a human guinea pig as you might say so that's an element i really like and it's also one interesting thing about biohackers is um, like i mentioned i'm a biohacker myself not only because i put electronics in my body like a tiny chip here i have in my hand but also i did a course on biohacking at the open wet lab at the Waag in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And the main idea of this um, definition of biohacking is that the use of biotechnology like genetic analysis but also genetic modification should not only be in the hands of large corporations or large institutions but because these technologies are way cheaper they should be also be accessible for more people. So that's also the main idea you see in this series and in the third documentary tip i will talk more about that but that's the this is another thing i really liked about this series the third thing i really liked about this documentary is that they also talk a lot about gene drive well gene drive it's a pretty interesting idea but also difficult so if you want to know more you can search online or watch this documentary but it, the, the main idea is that when you change the DNA of an organism, that change is not only within that organism, but that change will also be passed on to future generations. So for now, in gene dive, they, they look at, um, uh, for example, some mosquitoes who carry malaria. Can you also change them so they will not carry malaria anymore? or some, um, um, you can also think of other animals who have devastating effects on their ecosystem. Well, you follow the work of Kevin Esfield, he's really a superstar in this domain. And what I really like is that you follow him while he's in the lab and doing his research on, on, on tiny flies or mosquitoes. But then he also wants to do experiments like in the real world. So you see him when he visits the island 
And in the island, he has a conversation or a dialogue with, um, I think, the city council or the, the citizens, the inhabitants of that, uh, that little island. And you see him um, yeah, explain the ideas to the people of the island. But you also see, like, um, what's really interesting is the, the application of such a technology is not solely a technical question. But he really needs also to convince the, uh, the citizens that he can do his experiment on their island. So it's more of a philosophical question. I, I think better term is a political question. And there's also a lot of uncertainty, like what are, um, what are the effects on other species, on the whole ecosystem, if you as mankind try to change the, the DNA of one of these species, what will be other effects? So yeah, the, 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 the upside and the possibilities are, are magnificent, but we are not really sure about some other uh, uh, implications or other effects and what are the possible downsides. So I really like that they also have a lot of attention to that side of the debate in this series, Unnatural Selection. This is what people were really afraid of, was like, what if people just start using it on themselves? And then it was like, well, there it is. I think he was trying to change the world. The fact that he wound up dead seemed strangely timed. The third documentary is Citizen Bio from 2020. It's directed by Trish Dolman and the, this documentary is one hour and 35 minutes. So what do I like about Citizen Bio, there are three things. The first one is that this documentary is completely about biohackers. So human nature is also about, with, about the scientists that are involved and also how CRISPR works. And unnatural selection is also about uh, the impact CRISPR and genetic modification can have on nature and agriculture. But Citizen Bio is really about biohackers. So a lot of the main figures in unnatural selection, like Josia Zener and Aaron Trawick, they also made, make their appearance in Citizen Bio. And besides biohackers that are doing genetic experiments uh, on themselves, for example, they also talk with um, yeah, some other bread of uh, biohackers, as you might call it, uh, that are, for example, grinders. They are putting electronics in the body. So it's a, it's a broader scope, but within this scope of biohackers, they also focus most on the genetic modifiers, the, the people within biohacking who do mo genetic modification. The second thing I really liked about this documentary is that you see the struggle within the company, Ascendus Biomedical, about what's their goal in, in life, as you might call it. Because on the one hand, um, one of the, the, the fellow employees or, or colleagues of Aaron Trawick, the CEO of Ascendus Biomedical, they are really so f sort of for an anarchistic mo model where they want to uh, provide genetic modification with CRISPR for all the people in the world. So not only for really expensive pharmaceutical companies within our current capitalist capitalistic neoliberal model, but I really want to make it as, as cheap as possible and thereby do good for the world and help all the people in the world. But you also got another feeling when you watch the series, because is Aaron really as genuine about his, his ideas or does he also want to make money? So that, that's somewhat unclear, although you see it, at least for me, going in a certain direction. And it's also related to the third part. Aaron Trawick sadly passes away uh, while during uh, when the makers were making this documentary and you of course do, do not see uh, he passed away allegedly in a, a floating tank also with they found some traces of ketamine in his body so you you do not, of course do not see that but you hear interviews with his uh, colleagues and uh, employees and also with his close relatives but this re the the main idea of this documentary is that you really follow uh, uh, his ideas his work his uh, part of his life and it's also 
like I mentioned in the second, um, second insight, that it's not really clear about what's the goal of a sentence by a medical the company, but it's also not clear about who Aaron Trawick was. So on the one hand, you have a lot of people who say he's very charismatic and he, yeah, he wants to do good, good for the world, but there are also some people who were interviewed who say he's a psychopath and yeah, he, he maybe really have some other darker ideas about um, yeah, about life. So this documentary is mostly about the person, about the biohacker Aaron Trawick and his uh, his ideas and initiatives to change to change the, um, the pharmaceutical and, and the medical system and the healthcare system. But it also makes you wonder what were his true initiatives and what was his purpose in life. So it's more compared to the other documentaries, Human Nature and, and that Reflection. It's more of a documentary about, a, it's more of a biography, you can say. So to summarize, I shared three documentaries with you about human genetic engineering. The first one is Human Nature. I would say if you have to watch one of these series, you should watch that one. That's one hour and 35 minutes well spent. You, you actually got smarter when you watch that documentary. And if you like that and you want to know more about CRISPR-Cas9, not only on humans, but also on other ap for other ap applications, sorry, you can watch Unnatural Selection. And if you want to dive deeper in the idea of biohacking and the motives of biohackers and maybe a change in our medical and healthcare system, um, also related to yeah, the personal drama in the world, in, in, in the life of Aaron Trawick, I would recommend the documentary Citizen Bio. So please let me know if you have watched one of these documentaries, Human Nature, Unnatural Selection, or and or Citizen Bio. And please let me know which one you liked the best. And also, if you have a question or a remark, please leave a comment down below and also subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel and also if you have a question or a remark, leave a comment down below. Go to my website if you want to have a free download and if you are interested in more in-depth knowledge and know-how about human enhancement, human augmentation, biohacking and the superhuman era.